Welcome, everyone. Uh, bienvenue to Le Monde. Uh, this is Lunch and Learn is called Greening the Future of Education. Uh, Dine Cosari. This Lunch and Learn is called Greening the Future of Education. We are joined by two speakers today, uh, Winnie Shu and Rochelle Robichaud. Nous sommes rejoindre par deux interpreters. We are joined by two speakers today, Winnie Shu and Rochelle Robichaud. Andre Muse will be our interpreter today. Uh, and I, before we get started, I want to explain how to access the interpretation. Andre Muse will be our interpreter today. And before starting, I would like to uh, explain how to uh, access inter interpretation. Click on the, interpretation button on the bottom right, and then select English Dine Click on the interpretation button on the bottom right, and then select English to hear today's event in English. Click on the button on the bottom right, and then select Please click on the interpretation button to the le left uh, and click on uh, English to hear the event today in English. Uh, the meeting today is recorded in both French and English and as well um, bilingual. And uh, we will share the link uh, for you to access the recordings after the presentation. We want to acknowledge that those of us living in New Brunswick are doing so on the unceded and unsurrendered ancestral territory of the Wallastoquiak, Mi'kmaq, and Pescadumakati peoples. It is through the treaties of peace and friendship, first signed in 726 by the Wallastoquiak and Mi'kmaq with the British crown, that we are able to enjoy and inhabit this land. So I will be your facilitator today. My name is May Martinez. I work with the New Brunswick Environmental Network as the Sustainability Education Alliance Coordinator. We are also joined by Amanda Page, Jordan Kilger, and Olivia Malone, and they will be helping me to run this webinar in the background. The NBEN was established in 1991, and it is a communication network between over 100 environmental nonprofits. Its main role is to facilitate communication and cooperation between the nonprofits and with government, indigenous organizations, and with other stakeholders. C was established in 2005 and seeks to create a culture of sustainability education in the province. It does this through different activities like the annual conference, uh, through convening of teams, and through programs. And now I'm going to stop sharing the screen and share with you uh, the website page. Would you like me to get started? Oh, here, one second, Winnie. I'm just, uh, I'm going to share um, a website here. So I wanted to share with people um, the Great Minds Think Outside program. It's a professional development uh, opportunity um, for uh, teachers to learn how to take their students outdoors and teach them how to learn about the world in an experiential way. Then there's Earth Ed, which is a tool that helps teachers and other educators in New Brunswick to access field trips, uh, guest speakers, and student mentors. And uh, environmental NGOs often post um, listings um, for Earth Ed. And then we have the Climate Change Educators Community Hub, which is a platform for teachers to find classroom resources, lesson plans, and curriculum and it also has an events calendar. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my presentation slides. Just give me a second.
Okay, you can all see my slide okay? Yes, so um, we'll go to the next slide now. So I wanted to give us an opportunity to reflect on why are we all here today? And uh, I think one of the reasons is because we all care about the future of our children and youth. We want them to have opportunities to learn in a way that is supportive of their whole being. Teaching kids outdoors, daily acts of reconciliation with indigenous peoples and greening their classrooms are all activities that support their growth as human beings that can live connected with their communities and with nature. The Anglophone and Francophone branches of the Department of Education Early Childhood Development are both actively integrating these kinds of concepts and activities into documents that guide the future of education. We are here to learn more about those documents and to ask questions. So I wanna thank Rochelle and Winnie for joining us today and offering to speak about these documents. Also, thank you to the Environmental Trust Fund for enabling this event to happen. And thank you very much to Andre for interpreting for us and enabling us to listen in both English and French. So this is just a little flow of the day. Um, next, we'll get into introductions, which we'll be doing in the chat. Then Winnie will be presenting, followed by Rochelle, and then we'll be taking questions. So if you have questions during the presentations, please put them in the chat. And then we will take those questions after both presentations are finished. Also, when you're putting, making your uh, question, please say who it's directed to, if it's directed to Winnie or Rochelle or both. So, oh yes, um, one other thing is <clears throat> we would like to make do a quick poll to see who would like access to the recordings after the presentation is finished? So I'm going to make a poll now and it'll take probably just a couple minutes um, <clears throat> to answer. Okay, so the call is launched. Sorry about Sorry. that. Everybody, just make sure that you're muted if you're not speaking to avoid any uh, any feedback. Thank you.
So I'll give just uh, one more minute to complete the poll, then we'll collect the results and move on to the next slide. Okay, so I'm going to download the results now. Not seeing, oh, now we see the slides, sorry. Okay. Great, so I'll close that. Okay, and <clears throat> next slide is, okay, so this is an opportunity for you to share your name, <clears throat> your organization you're with, and which indigenous territory you're currently living on. And if you are not sure which territory you are on, you can check out this great website nativeland.ca and you can enter your address and then you'll find your territory. So you can do that as we're getting set up here. So our first speaker of the day is Winnie Shu. She is the learning specialist with uh, climate edu and in climate education with the learning and achievement branch of the Department of Education and Early Childhood Development. She'll be speaking about the document building a better education system. And now I'll stop my share. And you can go ahead and uh, upload your, and share your screen, Winnie. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. As May said, my name is Winnie Shu. My pronouns are she and her. And I'm here to share about two actual items. One is the New Brunswick curriculum, the updated holistic curriculum that's going to be implemented in 2000, September 2024, and the long-term recommendations. So while we're chatting here, I'm joining you from the beautiful and bountiful Willistook here in Fredericton. I wanted to know if you could see my slide. If you could do a thumbs up, that would be great. Thank you. So uh, if you're not familiar with Zoom, there are, if you move your mouse uh, on the Zoom features, you're going to notice that there are these things called reactions. So when you want to, if you don't want to turn your camera on, you can put the reactions and use them for your um, feedback. So um, we're going to get started today. Um, I have 15 minutes with you and then feel free to put your questions in the chat. Um, and if they're directed to me or to Rochelle, please put that in. So um, I'm going to start with this new curriculum that is available for the uh, implementation in September 2024. Uh, this is called the Holistic Curriculum and it will be implemented in 177 Anglophone sector schools in September. This framework has a huge, uh, it's a heavy lift because uh, there's a, what we've done is reduce duplication and consolidated a few things. And this is available on the digital platform. And um, I, when I'm done talking, I'll put the uh, link in the chat. So it's available for the public. Everyone can look at it. So when you come to this site, you're going to see the home. And then we're going to start with the curriculum framework. So the curriculum framework, depending on how you like to think of it, is the foundation or it's the umbrella that encompasses it all. And there is three main areas that we're going to talk about in this um, framework. One is the shared tenants. And if you look at the shared tenants, we're going to click on here. And there's a few items here that talk about um, what we would ask 
to see visible in our New Brunswick classrooms. So the 177 schools are K to eight schools. And within them, you we would ask that this shared experience, these shared tenants be visible. So Wabanaki history and culture, identities, inclusion and equity, lifelong learning, relationships and connections, sustainable futures, and well-being. So those are all shared values that we would like to see in all of our classrooms K to eight. Um, and so if you're coming in, we would ask that um, you recognize these values and that they are exhibited within your uh, personnel, within your resources and within your uh, actions that you take. And then within that framework, there are uh, how we teach, which have specific pedagogies. So these are not the only teaching strategies that we would say appear in New Brunswick classrooms, but these are what we call research-based high yield impact practices. So holding each layer, uh, each learner in the highest regard, safe and positive spaces for learning, direct instruction, experiential learning, play and inquiry-based learning, and relevant learning. So where possible, we would engage one of these six strategies in your activities or when you visit our classrooms or uh, get into the schools. The second part of the um, teaching, how we teach, is that um, we are now grouping in program blocks. And you'll see the grouping here, we have early child learning and childcare, birth to five, primary block five to eight, elementary eight to 11, middle block 11 to 14, and then high school 14 to 21. And so um, where you're preparing your activities, we would ask that you look at uh, the program blocks and make sure that they're suitable for their cognitive development, the emotional development, and the physiological, physical development of each of these program blocks. If you're unsure what that looks like, you can click on them. And, oh, sorry. And then they explain to you um, what that might look like for each of those program blocks. So there's some guidance here for what we would ask to, to see. And all of this comes from Portrait of a Learner. And within this, you can see there's dispositions, global competencies, and then skills and concepts and areas. So I just want to bring to your attention this global competencies. These are pan-Canadian so all across Canada, irrespective of the jurisdiction that you're in, they've all agreed to these uh, particular uh, competencies. And the difference between these competencies and, for instance, uh, the curriculum that I'm going to show you is that uh, we don't assess on these. We would potentially explicitly teach skill strategies related to collaboration. We would practice collaboration. We would uh, give feedback on collaboration, but we're not going to give a mark. We're not going to provide an evaluation. So we would look that these be represented also in our activities. So we've got collaboration, communication, critical thinking, problem solving, innovation, creativity, entrepreneurship, self-awareness, self-management, sustainability, and global citizenship. We would not expect all six of these um, to appear in every activity or every resource or every session, you might choose one or two to focus on for your particular activity. And then um, the last thing that I can show you sort of from the framework page, the digital framework page, is that we actually have resources here that are developed by teachers for teachers that are specifically curriculum aligned. And so these are gated, so are, um, and they're only for MBA teachers, but I just want you to know that this is um, something that is directly aligned to the curriculum. The thing that I want to sort of finish with is the learning areas. So within each of the learning areas, the by, by the program blocks, um, you can see the different subject areas. So I'm going to pick elementary English language arts because that is one of our priorities. Um, literacy, numeracy, and well-being, those are our three sort of uh, uh, priority areas that we're going to look at. So if you look here, the context and concepts of literacy in the elementary block, they talk about what you might be doing and then here, the strand, 
that leads to the big idea, that leads to the skill descriptor. This skill descriptor is the object that the teacher is explicitly assessing and evaluating. This is what goes on the report card. This is what they look like. So an example might be describe and discuss thoughts, feelings, experiences, ideas, and opinions. That's what the teacher is going to be addressing within the classroom, we hope. And then what we see here is these achievement indicators. These are drilled down that the teacher might look for these in the student um, products or the student work or their presentations or what they do. So they could, the student can demonstrate that they can describe and discuss thoughts, feelings, experiences, ideas, and opinions by actually describing an emotion or a personal experience and or situations with details. And so using that. So um, I just want to let you know that sort of academic Academically, that this is the skill descriptor is what the teacher assesses, and that's what's going on uh, in the uh, report cards and so forth. And so these are the ones that we would do that. So they're all available now for each of the learning areas. You can do it French immersion, French second language, mathematics, music, personal wellness, physical education. They're all listed here, and you can look at them. And if you have an activity that you feel is a visual art one, then you will come here and you look and see where does it apply directly to which skill descriptor? Because we would like to see whatever you're offering really support the educator in the content specifically with related to this. So that is my first document. Um, and then the my next document is this one called Building a Better Education System, an Action Plan for Implementing the Long-Term Recommendations for New Brunswick's Anglophone Education System. So this is the uh, long-term recommendations. This was just released about a month and a half ago and will be sort of ongoing for the next three to five years. Um, we would look at uh, implementing starting September or January in this upcoming year, but that we would it would be a long process. And so um, that's the plan right now. And if we can look through this, what I would like to show you is some of the different recommendations. So the first one we have is create environments where learners thrive. So we want to move to address the emerging critical concern of chronic absenteeism, reinforce a culture of learning by working with school districts and stakeholders to draft a provincial action plan on school attendance. I know that um, my experience has been that students love field trips. They love guest speakers. They love getting outside. These are all things and ways that you could support this long-term recommendation. And so I would offer an opportunity at the end for you to suggest where you think you might fit into some of these. Um, I'm going to put the link to the document in the chat so you can see this, but you can just Google it if you need to. Last, uh, next, sorry, is uh, develop a new classroom composition model and a reasonable timeline to implement an improved, inclusive, and equitable system. So this one speaks to the inclusion model that we have within New Brunswick. And one of the things that we would ask is that educators um, are asked to provide tier one interventions for all their students. And if we are looking at, for an example, might be outdoor learning and taking their students outside, we want to make sure that they are supported and have um, the right personnel, the right training, and the right um, skills. The next one we have is leverage technology to enhance learning and personalization. So today's session is an example of that. So we're able to offer a virtual session like this across the province to multiple organizations. We would want to continue to do that. So where your materials um, need uh, maybe updating or to be digitized, this is something that we can, um, is would be an ad advantage. The next our document we have, uh, next, sorry, recommendation is uh, place a focus on middle school learners aged 11 to 14 by working to identify actions and programs to improve academic achievement, engagement, achievement, and well-being. So here we're explicitly tasked with supporting uh, that middle school program block. So if you have resources, uh, personnel, uh, experiences that could support this, 
you know, we really appreciate hearing about that. Uh, we have French language learning. And so what we're asking is that every resource that is student facing, even for the Anglophone sector, be available in both French and in English. Engaging our communities. So we're, this one may be the one that most is applicable to uh, C and MBEN, which is encourage movement and getting outside, including embedding 30 minutes of physical education for K to eight daily, in addition to outdoor education opportunities. So the um, K to two is now, a school day is gonna be extended. Um, on a, and so they will continue to be the same as the regular um, three to five schedule. And uh, so this might be an opportunity to get out the outdoor education opportunities, um, increase those. Next, we have uh, a Center of Excellence for Language Learning. Um, to assist students. So like I said, uh, French language resources will be really, really appreciated and um, improve retention, recruitment of qualified teachers, specialized health service professionals in education. What we're doing is providing support and professional learning opportunities for educators um, and uh, EAs as well. So educational assistance and we want to provide teachers of early readers with specific training designed to maximize the development and outcome of these students. So this is specifically to literacy, but I know that your um, work supports that development as well. And then we have develop and implement equitable access to professional learning for educators and resources, strategies and interventions to best support each learner in English prime and French language classrooms. So uh, what, what this organization can do, what you can do within your respective organizations is to um, provide uh, as equitable, accessible access to your expertise or resources as possible. And, and then obviously in, in English, both languages, English and in French. And so that's it. Um, I want to thank you for your time and joining us today. If you have any questions, please pop them in the chat. Again, my name is Winnie Shu, and my email is winnie.hsu at gnb.ca, and I'll put those links in the chat. Thanks so much, Winnie. That was really great overview, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what questions and comments people have um, afterwards. Um, now I'm going to share my screen uh, and, uh, and introduce Rochelle. Hello, no pressure. So our next speaker is Rachel Rabichaud. She works as the provincial education officer uh, for environment and uh, climate change at the ministry, at Department of Education and Early Childhood Development. She will talk about the the uh, document Guide d'engagement environnemental et climatique, a guide to environmental and climate engagement. And uh, I'll let you sh share your screen, uh, Rachel. Merci beaucoup, May. Thank you very much, May. Merci, Winnie, uh, Thank you, Winnie, for your lovely presentation uh, on uh, Anglophone sector. Um, uh, hello, my name is Rachel Robichaud. Uh, I'm a teacher. Uh, uh, Since 2021, I've been working at the, the Department of Education, as May was saying. It's my, I'm pleased to be with you today. To be with here with you today. Uh, don't hesitate to speak with me after the presentation if you wish, even on the Anglophone sector side of things. If you want to communicate with me, uh, please don't hesitate. Uh, for schools or all environmental organizations as well. I'm always available. So I'm going to try to just present uh, to you the documents uh, that have been developed and are also under development. It's, uh, it's really being built in conjunction with the school district and schools and organizations. 
and a great thanks to the Environment Network for inviting us today. Now I'm going to share my screen. It's a document that was published in 2016. It really rather changed the face and the objectives of the uh, French education system in New Brunswick. You'll tell me if you please tell me if you see the screen. No. Do you see uh, the outcome profile of this? Uh, do you see that one? The outcome profile of a student uh, that was published in 2016. It brought the educational system and led it to develop uh, skills beyond uh, teaching content, beyond theoretical uh, content in classes. I'll just kind of go over the overview here, just to say what it involves. A great thanks to the organizations for your really carefully listening and aligning your uh, trainings and your resources with our new objectives uh, within the French sector. I know you're making major efforts to be in harmony with the Anglophone uh, sector as well. It was uh, aligned thanks to this document on the, on the Francophone side with our two aims not just to develop uh, cognitive skills or theoretical skills in terms of our content, also aiming a committed citizenship and a desire of, for lifelong learning. We have uh, done a lot of work in terms of uh, a career and life development, uh, experiential learning, as Winning was saying. It does, doesn't just happen in uh, the classroom and a balanced uh, life. Uh, in terms of education and the environment, we it really covers our, our, our major new aims uh, that have been lately in our schools. As uh, Winnie was saying, in, on the Anglophone side of things, uh, for the curriculum, it's been well integrated in, on a theoretical basis and then also in just concrete terms in, in the curriculum. It's really under construction though on the Francophone side whether it's just in, in real terms in the curriculum, but schools and teachers are already bringing about changes and improvements connected to the outcome uh, profile. I can't show you in concrete terms uh, the in curriculum, the major changes, but we do have a, a documents that support these initiatives uh, and ahead of the desired uh, changes and you'll see you'll soon be seeing some concrete uh, changes really big changes in our in our curriculums so the three skills that are already being incorporated in our uh, curriculums the social emotional ones there are cognitive skills critical thinking creative thinking and communication skills, language skills. So we are always developing things related to the uh, profile uh, uh, outcome. In, in, in when uh, a few years ago, when the uh, when the Department of Environment financed our objectives in the front on the francophone sector, we launched uh, greening the spark. I'm just going to go right to that uh, site, uh, greening the spark. It's a big project to launch an initiative to raise awareness to start in our schools. We didn't immediately start into curriculums. We just wanted to promote things that were already in our schools, really promote and uh, to set clear objectives and to also motivate our schools to continue to act not only in terms of uh, courses but uh, or in-class teaching, but also in terms of values and in the French-speaking education system, uh, whether it be principals, staff, uh, school districts, uh, principals, and also in initiatives and practices. Their approaches, basically, in, in school and within the, at the district level as well. So let's look at the guide. We're going to look at the guide after, but I'll start with a model that was launched in 2021. It's an eco-citizenship education model. So this model, it's rather, it's, it's a guide actually, uh, so that irrespective of the teaching or your approaches or the uh, project outside of class, whether it be environment or 
or something else that you always make sure that 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 you think of three elements this was also built uh, with certain partners in mind, uh, seniors, uh, members of the community, uh, of the indigenous community, school districts, teachers. There was a provincial uh, committee as well. You'll see in this guide this uh, the picture of our schools in terms of environmental action. We're active. There's a lot of actions uh, acting. It's on the right-hand column. You see the actions, uh, for example, uh, uh, be in class projects or at the school, like um, waste management in schools, uh, uh, working to increase biodiversity in the schoolyard. It can also be in terms of uh, science exhibits or related to energy in our physics courses, for example, is both in terms of uh, subjects as and it also covers school initiatives we're really focused on action we want to make sure that it's not just doesn't just stay at school that the learner the the student uh even the school staff continues to incorporate those uh, practices as an eco-responsible citizen and in their professional uh, pro uh, work uh, uh, after a course or or uh, let's say they participated in a school initiative. Yes, actions, but we want to make sure that we never forget uh, to neglect, uh, we never neglect a preparation, uh, bringing in experts, for example, or doing research. That's the preparation uh, in terms of uh, raising awareness to action and influencing. You go outside of the walls of the school, you publicize it, uh, schools, need to work on the visibility of their environmental projects because um, engagement can uh, happen through uh, by, by leading through example. So there's the guide. It's a model that we refer to to ensure that our commitments are uh, sustainable. So if we go into the uh, main doc, the guide to environmental engagement or uh, this was also built it's still under construction so if you if you do look at this document and you have any suggestions uh, advice uh, to provide to me please don't hesitate it's still under construction so what we're tr we've been trying to do since 2021 there are about 60 projects that were fi uh, financed every year and I've, uh, in terms of those projects, I had a provincial team uh, to really uh, make a, to establish a picture of our schools to see where we're at and to inspire schools to act, uh, but be it in the classroom or in the school setting generally. So this guide, it, well, there are many objectives. Uh, really where is where raise awareness and motivate people uh, facilitate uh, facilitate collaboration with external resources like environmental network uh, organizations for example and also listen to the youth there's a willingness for this the federation of the young francophone youth mentioned that was one of their priorities they want to act in a visible way uh, in terms of the environment. So in this guide, the organizations and individuals, whether you have resources to share or not, you can become directly involved. Everything connected to the environment in terms of the francophone education sector, we just try to put all of that in the guide, in this engagement guide. So I hope that the next at the next presentation, I'll be able to present our new uh, curriculum, rather like the Anglophone sector just did. Uh, uh, thank you, Winnie. Uh, there's lovely changes uh, on the to 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 come. But in in the meantime, you can look at this guide. And teachers on the uh, francophone side, we have community development uh, officers in each of our 89 schools, and they can apply for. Uh, to for financing, the, it's called Education uh, Climatic, Climatic edu, edu, Education, 
and uh, they can go to the forum. Uh, there are funds for next year, but actually uh, they've all been uh, allocated for this year. Um, so uh, as of as from the start of the guide, they can access the main resources, uh, like such as the environmental network that is suggested. Uh, that the the it suggests that environment network can put them into contact with other organizations on a specific topic rather than have uh, all of the lovely resources that we have in the province we can go back here on the model presented that's within the guide as well the guide there are 12 uh, engagement uh, branches. Um, so in, we wanted to talk about educational uh, environment education in, in 12 sections. So you see there's indigenous points of view, green leaders, that includes how to train our committee, our environmental committees in schools, how is it related to careers, and environmental health. There's uh, outdoor learning, uh, connection to the uh, envi natural environment. Let's talk about the environment. It's to give tools to our learners to communicate, and make uh, arguments and, and, and defend environmental causes. Biodiversity, uh, we could, let's go into one a section just to show you the guide. So you click on it and there's a, a summary sheet that describes uh, this uh, 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 strand, and there are so many great initiatives in all of our schools. We, we wanted to uh, make an overview. It's a, a bit of, uh, it, it just does present the, the advice, recommendations, and links uh, to the curriculum uh, uh, or, or, or subjects, school subjects. It's really condensed on a single sheet with the main resources uh, for each. So let's say biodiversity. If you want to improve our school courses, that's not just uh, oh, just lawn. Uh, lots of uh, uh, schools have great uh, projects to naturalize the uh, school environment. We have some resources for each uh, strand. And then you can come back to the 12 strands. There's uh, uh, responsible consumption, uh, uh, waste management, uh, green uh, 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 food. Uh, agree, uh, so that you can consult this guide and improve it with us as well. And there are many schools that use it to set objectives. And we can say that most uh, schools are meeting, are, are, touch, are touching upon uh, nearly all of these strands, whether it be a school-based initiative or done uh, by a specific teacher in their class. So that's what I wanted to present. So uh, uh, all, you can always uh, speak with me and communicate with me. Uh, I did speak a bit fast. Oh, thank you. Somebody already put it in the chat. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rachel. It's very interesting. To, it's very interesting to learn a bit more about that document and uh, the orientation of uh, the Francophone section. Uh, thank you very much. Next, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Next, I will um, share my slides. Okay, so um, now is the time for questions. We have about uh, 12 minutes for, for questions. Um, if you have a question, uh, you can either raise your hand or put it in the chat and Jordan will be monitoring uh, the chat. And uh, please, uh, just a reminder to please say if it's your question is for Winnie or Rochelle or for both. Um, and uh, I will take questions in the order that I see them. So, yes.
And maybe while people are thinking of their questions, um, or wait, Jordan, were there any questions in the chat? No, none right now. Okay. So while people are thinking of questions and comments, um, I have a question for, for both of you. Um, I'm wondering what, um, how can we as a diverse community of um, teachers, administrators, environmental NGOs in our different roles, um, how can we help to support you in implementing the in implementing actions in your guiding documents? May, do you want to say that out, Jose? Uh, oui, merci. Um, alors, yes, thanks. Uh, comment est-ce qu'on peut uh, aider? How can uh, we help with the implementation of these actions? As that we've seen these documents, that the documents that you just presented. Uh, Rachel, you want to start, Rachel? Yeah, I can start. I'll say it in French, so the, those who have interpretation can have it in English. Well, I think we have to continue this great collaboration. Uh, I thank the network for allowing us, uh, con uh, constantly allowing us to collaborate, irrespective of, uh, well, I should say, whether it's on the francophone or the anglophone side, all organizations have the same goal. Our, we have a shared goal. We are seeking to develop skills uh, within our students uh, related to uh, the environment and climate change. I don't have a clear answer, but uh, Winnie and myself uh, regularly speak with each other. We're trying uh, to move forward together and also don't hesitate to communicate things with us. If you're developing resources or if you, any, if you have any questions, uh, to just to make sure that you're in line, uh, aligned with us, just always never hesitate to communicate with us. Uh, uh, just to, to be sure that uh, we have the right contact people as well and that you're aligned with our uh, programs. I would echo Rachel's uh, commentary. The collaboration is really, really, really valuable. Um, one of the things is the alignment to the curriculum allows us to connect directly with the educators in their classroom with their lived experience. Um, we hope that um, our walkthroughs, my walkthrough today has shown you how, uh, and you see the space for you and your organization and your expertise to be in 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 classrooms and stuff like that so i hope that uh, the more alignment there is the more we're heading in the same direction oh nadine uh please go ahead hi I can talk quicker than I can type. I just want to say thanks to both Winnie and Rochelle. Um, I think um, it, it it looks good for the future of New Brunswick's children and their teachers. Um, so it's quite exciting. I'm glad that all the things that you covered are being um, prioritized. Um, and that getting, I, I, I appreciate also on the Anglophone sector, the um, the focus on learning for the middle school because I remember years ago at a, a forum with high school students, they were saying that actually the middle school students, when they were in middle school, that was when they had least opportunities to be outside. Um, so, and as we know for uh, mental and emotional well-being, that's really important, especially at that for that age group when they're going so, through so many changes. Um, uh, one question that I had is, Winnie, you mentioned um, EAs, and I didn't catch everything, but the importance of having them receive the training that they need. And as um, a longtime member of the Great Minds Think Outside program, which provides um, professional learning sessions for teachers 
on how to teach outside and we encourage and support teachers in taking their curriculum outside. Um, but we rarely, it's very hard for us to get EAs participating, partly because they go to different PL sessions than the teachers. And um, it would be great if we could somehow um, <laughs> have offer to them what we offer teachers. And again, in my position as a learning outside program coordinator at the Conservation Council, I've been out with classes, which are great and uh, which is fine, but sometimes I've seen, you know, I just noticed like midway through an outdoor session that um, an EA and the student they're looking after leave. And I might find out after the fact that, oh, that student needed to be taken inside because of whatever. And sometimes I could have, if I'd known, um, for example, in one instance, there was a child who needed something to fidget with. Well, I had lots of puppets in my backpack. Like if I had just, if there'd been a way for me to communicate that or find out beforehand, um, we could have made that an enriching experience for that child as well. But again, there wasn't the opportunity for me to make those connections because usually, as you know, teachers are busy, classrooms are busy, schedules are busy. So I show up, we get the group together, we go do our thing. Um, and, and there isn't really time. So anyway, so that's just something that I would love to see um, somehow communication channels or um, ways to sort of include EAs and of course the students that they they work with. And because um, even if we can make adaptations, we have to know um, that, you know, because you can't tell when you've got a group of 15 kids in a circle, you you don't know which ones. You, you, I mean, obviously you're always on the lookout for that, but um, anyway, so that's just my comment. It would be great to be able to sort of make those connections more strongly. So I respond to a couple of components on, on your um, part, Nadine. So the first part is um, with, in terms of communication, we're hoping that, um, we can level up everybody's uh, process. Um, and so if you go into schools and in and, and classrooms and, and you recognize that uh, the EAs are not always included, um, please ex you know, provide an explicit invitation that this is also you know, available to EAs and they may or may not be able to attend. So that's one part of the process communication yeah, we, we always do, but again, it's there being different unions or whatever, mm -hmm. but I, anyway. I understand. Um, and then the second component with that is um, in terms of uh, recognizing that, that we have these various actions and that at different times, we may focus on different priorities. And so, um, the reality is we can't be everything to everyone all the time. And so when you're in Nadine, I recognize that uh, your specific situation um, meant that you weren't able to engage as fully as you had wanted to. Um, but the reality is you were able to support the educator uh, to get outside and to have some of that. And that's our first step. And so so the next time we would ask that we, now that you've learned from this situation, um, those students um, that require additional support, that might be part of your inventory when you connect with the teacher about that. Yeah. And then yeah. the last thing that I just wanted to just speak to was um, as a system, we are also trying to help um, yeah. support educators uh, with a wide spectrum of students. And we would recognize that whatever we provide one student should be available to all students. And so we would try to make that happen. Um, this year we've done a, a, a tier one intervention equity um, and inclusion learning series to improve um, to help teachers with strategies for um, special needs, exceptionalities, um, 
both physical, uh, physiological, and uh, uh, developmental. So, yeah. no, great, and I appreciate that. And I have like again, I have had talks with teachers like, oh, you know, let me know next time, and I'll do whatever. Um, but again, it's been a bit haphazard. But just listening to you speak, yeah, we're all in this together, doing the best we can, trying to make those connections for the benefit of the kids and the teachers and the EAs. Um, and I guess one thing that we can do and other uh, groups that likewise, you know, provide activities to school classes um, in that in my little description of what I do and how I can explicitly say um, that we make an effort and if there are accommodations that I can make, I'm more than happy to do so. So I guess maybe just being more upfront about that um, and any descriptions of of what of our program would be helpful. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, I think um, we need to wrap up now just so that we don't go over our time. I'm gonna share my screen again, not that one. Here we go. Um, yeah, so um, if you have more questions for Winnie and Rochelle, um, their emails uh, will be in the chat. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone for coming and for being part of this uh, beautiful presentation today. Uh, thank you very much to Winnie and Rochelle for your time and for speaking with us and sharing about these very uh, inspiring and uh, important documents. Thank you to Andre Muse for his interpretation services. And thank you again to our funder, the Environmental Trust Fund. Um, if you'd like to stay in touch with us, we have a, a regular newsletter, um, so you can find the link in the chat for that. Also, um, there are links to the C page and the NBEN pages. And a recording of this presentation will be made available uh, on, on the C page under workshops and events. So thanks everyone so much for coming and joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye now. <laughs>